Um, hi everybody, I'm Mr. Lowe. Um, I teach English both in year nine and year 12. I've been here since 2010. Um, and I'm one of the VCA student managers this year. Awesome, thank you so much for coming, Steve. That's all right. Um, so why did you become decide to become a teacher and why specifically at Fountaingate? Okay, um, it's a good question because I didn't want to be a teacher when I got straight out of high school. I think it's kind of common for a lot of teachers to fall into this a little bit. I actually worked uh, as a journalist for about oh, wow. six to nine, I was about six and a half months at one place. Um, so I worked for Monash as well um, and I worked for some charities as well. Then I moved into doing a bit of public relations too. Oh wow. And did some PR for a bit. Yeah. And then sort of decided, all right, I liked when I was doing stories and working with people, it was the, the interactions with people I think yeah. that was the most rewarding. You bounced off other people and that energy. Yeah, and I did a few stories where I had to go out to schools and interview kids and I kind of was like, this looks pretty good. And yeah. then I've got a couple of relatives that are teachers. So I got to the end of a year of doing some PR and I thought, I think it's time for a job change. And yeah. went to uni and yeah, I've just like, from there, I did one year at uni Loved it. Yeah. And then I locked into Fountain Gate. Like I had a job interview towards the end of the year. I think I was, uh, Mr. Ewans interviewed me um, at, at the end of 2009. Um, got the interview that night. I got the phone call from Mr. Ewans offering me the job, and I've been here ever since. I've just been really, really lucky. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, so, do you have any uh, particular hobbies or special talents or interests? Talents, probably not. <laughs> no, I, I can't think of anything. Hobbies, yeah, like I, sport in particular, like footy. Or yeah. Like, uh, Who do you go for? Uh, Melbourne. So had a uh. win on the weekend, which was great. Um, but it hasn't always been the easiest time being a Melbourne supporter. No. Um, uh, I play cricket as well. Yeah. Um, Just locally. Yeah. So I play for Ferntree Gully Footballers. Yeah. So I grew up in Willis Hill, um, and most of my mates are from Willis Hill Roval kind of area. Yeah. So I've played cricket there for quite a long time. Um, what else? To particular hobbies so I'm a bit childish even though I'm like getting a bit older so I still play video games really into my computer games and computers and technology yeah um, yeah, yeah I and like my dogs and my family like I've yeah. got two little I've got two like I've got two dogs I've got Bridie she is a Jack Russell Whippet cross and then I've got oh, Jones cute. who's my um, greyhound like, yeah he's my dog I've had him for about four years yeah I've always had greyhounds um, when I've like lived out of home because I just really love them. They're lovely dogs. So yeah, he's so important to me. I've actually got like a picture of him permanently emblazoned on my leg. So yeah. Oh, so cute. Yeah. So animals, sport, computers, just. And you have a beautiful little baby. Yes, I do. Ollie, he was born August the 3rd last year. So, um, and I'm, I've been married for, like I've been with my wife now for since high school, so it's been about 15 years. Yeah. And we've been married for a few wow. years and we've got little Ollie, so if you want to edit in a photo of this him later, you can Ooh, splice, one in, <laughs> splice one in if you want. He's nearly one, so I'm like, being a dad's been fantastic, I think. Yeah. I kind of feel like being a teacher at Fountain Gate and being a student manager has kind of prepared me to be a dad. Yeah. I d definitely, because just the interactions you have with the kids here, yeah, it's made me want, being a teacher's made me want to become a father more. Yeah, and now you get to look forward to all those moments with your kid, like yeah. when they go through high school and stuff as well. Yeah, they teach you a lot of, like the kids here are fantastic. Like that's why I've been here for so long and haven't yeah. left, because I just love it so much. So the kids are just wonderful, the parents are great. So all of that's just made me want to be a parent more. I'm really enjoying being a dad. That's amazing. Um, so, what is your ultimate dream holiday? If you had all the money in the world, um, you have got one holiday. Uh, so, one holiday, Yeah. it would probably be a long holiday, so <laughs> yeah. I, I would go to every major sporting event across the US and Europe, Okay. which would be like, it's a real, it's a real blokey kind of holiday, but I'd, like I've been to some baseball and I've been to some basketball, but yeah. I want to do everything across the US and all through Europe and um, try and hit up some EPL um, and some Bundesliga in um, Germany as well, and then go through what, see some hockey. And, yeah, that'd be amazing. Yeah. So much variety as well. That's it. I do that. Plus, I just want to spend like a year in Europe because I've, I've been to the, the US quite a few times. Yeah. Um, like I lived with like my dad lived there for a while when yeah. he was working, so we lived with him in the US for a bit. So I've sort of I've done the You've US. You've done that. But Europe. Would be, Europe is I, next on the list. Yeah, when Ollie gets a little bit older, yeah, I'll take him overseas oh. and yeah, take him all around. <gasps> Jealous. Yeah. Um, so what is one thing you wish you had known as a student? I did well in school, um, which I was surprised at. So, and I think probably the thing I should have known is probably listen to my parents more. Yeah. Um, I thought I had all of the answers to every question. Yeah. And when my parents were telling me things, I would be like, yeah, mom, yeah, dad, I get it. I'm fine. So I think maybe listen to my parents a little bit more. And I think nowadays kids are better prepared to study than I was. We yeah. just got told to sit in a room and do study. 
Um, whereas now they get the support to like, here's a study timetable, here's how you actually affect And to study, study. Smar uh, smarter. Yeah, like I, th I think I had to learn it in university because yeah. I didn't really, like that would have helped me a lot because when I got to uni, I struggled because I wasn't used to studying um, effectively. Yeah. Whereas now yeah. I think, at least I like to hope that we prepare kids quite well for tertiary study and the kids go to Fountain Gate, they go to uni, tend to do pretty well because they're kind of used to Yeah, definitely. And it is themselves. such a big change from high school to uni in terms of lifestyle as well. Yeah, like you, and like you would know the same yourself. Going from high school to uni, it's a, you you have to manage it all yourself. So. Yeah, definitely. The um, time management oh, yeah. is it's, very, it's very different. different. Yeah. No <laughs> you teachers, need a lot of self-will and self-control. There's no teachers breathing down your neck telling no. you if you don't get things in, you're going to be in trouble. So... Yeah. It's like you don't necessarily like it, but you definitely miss it when it's not there. Yeah, that's, um, that's some of the things that I've noticed from the year 12s that finished. They're like, oh, I just want to come back to high school. Why? Oh, because you helped me get organized. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Um, so what is a future goal or target of yours? For example, buy a house, live overseas, um, write a book, so, go horse riding. <laughs> yeah, um, I have bought I bought a house in 2012. So after a few years oh, of teaching here. Congratulations. Yeah, I actually really like the area. Like, yeah. I, 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 Really like the kids, really like the area, really like this sort of space. So I bought a house mm -hmm. in Berwick in 2012, we've lived there. Berwick is really nice. Yeah, it's lovely. Um, and then, like, I have lived overseas for a bit. Oh, where'd you live? Uh, I lived oh, in Boston. Yeah. yeah, so my dad worked in Boston for a company over there for, he was over there for about a, oh, six months. I, yeah. I was young, but we lived overseas. So I think golf, in terms of an ultimate goal or something I'd really like to do, I just would like to have a happy family. Like, I'd like yeah. to have one or two more kids. Um, maybe a girl this time around to sort of yeah. balance it out a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then just you know, make sure that they grow up happy and healthy. And I think just, it's a very simple goal, but I think it's, it's a beautiful goal. Yeah, it's, it's a, a like, very, very good goal. Ho hopefully it's an attainable and achievable goal. I'm sure, I'm sure it is. Um, and then also, what are you doing this weekend? Yeah, I suppose at the moment we're not doing a lot. <laughs> like, I'm, a little bit limited in the response there. Yeah, but I am going to do some gardening, dig up like just basically now I'm focusing on just renovating and doing like we've done the inside of the house now it's focusing on the outside of the yeah, house so perfect. I'll probably do some digging up and rip up some stuff outside and repave and um, I've got to build some stuff outside in the garden so I'll probably be doing that depending on the weather because it's not too nice outside at the moment yeah. otherwise it'll be sitting inside playing with Ollie and just having a grand old time doing yeah, that. Yeah just yeah. recharging a bit. Yeah that's it I think it's been a long year. Yeah it's um, Definitely. So that leads on to the last question. Um, do you have any words of advice or thoughts for students regarding, um, you know, isolation and like our time during COVID? Yeah, um, I think the best piece of advice I could give you is just give yourself a bit of slack. Like this is new for everybody. You don't have to get things perfect. You don't have to do it 100%. You don't have to get everything done to the best of your ability, no matter what. Like, take some time for yourself. I think as a teacher, um, and as a parent, one of the things I've noticed is if I spend all of my time focusing just on work and things along those lines, like other parts of my life suffer. And I yeah. watch the kids stress about things and feel like they have to get everything perfect. Don't. Just take a breath, take an hour out of the day for yourself. Eventually, things will hopefully get back, back to normal. normal. Yeah. And you'll have learned you'll enough over the course there. of isolation that it won't be a big deal. So just give yourself, give yourself some slack more than anything. That doesn't mean don't do anything. <laughs> just sit back and relax and know that as long as you're trying. You yeah, know, that's, that's all the amazing. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for coming for this interview. Um, we really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for having me in. It's been, yeah, hopefully I'll, some old students and stuff will see me and um, they'll realise that during isolation I decided to do the thing that most blokes do and cut all their hair off and grow <laughs> a beard at the same time. So, yeah. you, you were obligated to. Yeah, I think most... It was the, demanded of you. Yes, the isolation cuts definitely were demanded. Yeah, yeah. it was what's trending. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Steve. It's all right, guys. Have a good one.